In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about TCA cycle. Here TCA, it stands for tricarboxylic acid. So it is also called as a tricarboxylic acid cycle. The other name of this compound that is tricarboxylic acid is the citrate. And because of that, it is also called as a citric acid cycle. Now this important cycle, it was first proposed in the year 1937 by Hans Krebs. Hans Krebs. And for this important discovery, this scientist, he was awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1953. So in honor of this scientist, this cycle, it is also called as a Krebs cycle. So remember this TCA cycle may have make also called as a citric acid cycle or also called as a Krebs cycle. This important thing we have to keep in mind. Now TCA cycle is very, very important because it is a part of central metabolic pathway. It actually carries out the final common oxidation of the carbohydrate, amino acid and fats. So all of this food stuff, the final common oxidative pathway is TCA cycle. The TCA cycle, its major role is in the provision of energy. It supplies the energy and actually speaking, two third of total ATP, which is generated in our body, it is generated from this TCA cycle. But remember, the energy production is not the only function of the TCA cycle. TCA cycle has second important function is that it provides intermediates. And these intermediates of the TCA cycle, it is useful in the synthesis of glucose, certain non-essential amino acids, heme and many other molecules, right? So remember, TCA cycle has mainly two purpose. The first one is the energy and second one is the supply of intermediates for all these different substance synthesis. Now, before looking into the reactions of TCA cycle, let's first take an overview of TCA cycle. Now, in the TCA cycle, the first reaction is that, that oxaloacetate, which is of the four carbon compound, it first condenses with the acetyl coenzyme A. So there is a binding of acetyl coenzyme A with the oxaloacetate. But here only acetyl portion of acetyl coenzyme A, it condenses with the oxaloacetate. And this acetyl portion has only two carbon. So the four carbon from the oxaloacetate and two carbon from the acetyl coenzyme A gives rise to a six carbon compound that is called as a citrate. Then this citrate undergoes series of enzyme catalyzed reaction to regenerate this oxaloacetate, right? So as you can see, this six carbon citrate, it is undergoing enzyme catalyzed reaction series of that and giving rise to four carbon oxaloacetate. So how these two carbons are reduced? So these two carbons are oxidized and removed in the form of two molecules of carbon dioxide. And along with the oxidation of these two carbon, energy is released. And this energy is released in the form of one ATP molecule, three NADH plus H plus molecule, and one molecule of FADH2. So in this three form, energy is released along with the removal of two molecule of carbon dioxide. In this reaction, as you can see in this TCA cycle, oxaloacetate is actually not consumed, rather it is regenerated. So we can say in TCA cycle, oxaloacetate is not consumed only acetyl portion of this acetyl coenzyme A is getting consumed, right? So I can say that one molecule of oxaloacetate can oxidize infinite molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. But think carefully, if you don't provide oxaloacetate, will this acetyl coenzyme A will be able to undergo oxidation? No. So oxaloacetate is required, but it is not getting consumed. So because of this reason, we can consider oxaloacetate molecule as a catalyst of this TCA cycle, right? The second important thing is that, that during this series of enzyme catalyzed reaction, various intermediates are formed and many intermediates, they leave this cycle and enter into other metabolic pathway or from the other, other metabolic pathways, many intermediates may enter into this TCA cycle, right? So don't consider TCA cycle as a closed cycle, that it is an isolated cycle. No, it is open to such other metabolic pathway as their intermediates, they are able to leave 
or enter into the TCA cycle, right? So because of that, this TCA cycle should be considered as an open cycle. Why? Because it is open to other metabolic pathway. So now we can talk about the reactions of TCA cycle. See, in the TCA cycle, there are total 10 intermediates, right? And we have to memorize all these 10 intermediates. So for that, that memorization might be difficult. So for that, there is one very good mnemonics for this TCA cycle intermediates. That mnemonic is our current city is okay, safe and secure from mobsters. So let's first try to memorize these various intermediates. So here, our, it stands for the first molecule that is oxaloacetate. Current stands for citrate. City stands for c seconitate Is stands for isocitrate. Here, from the OK, this O stands for oxalosuccinate and K, it stands for ketoglutarate, that is alpha ketoglutarate. Safe, it stands for succinyl coenzyme A. Secure stands for succinate. From stands for fumarate. And mobster, it stands for millet. So by this mnemonic, you can easily memorize all the intermediates of the TCA cycle. So let's look at the reactions of TCA cycle. The first reaction of the TCA cycle is the condensation of this oxaloacetate with the acetyl portion of acetyl coenzyme A. As I told you previously, oxaloacetate is the 4 carbon compound and it condenses with this acetyl portion which is of the 2 carbon compound and gives rise to a citrate and it will be of this 4 plus 2 that makes total 6 carbon, right? So citrate is the 6 carbon compound. Remember, this coenzyme A is not getting condensed with the oxaloacetate, rather it is getting released as a coenzyme A with its thiol group. And in this reaction, one molecule of water is being added. This reaction is catalyzed by the citrate synthase. Remember, it is not synthetase, it is simply a synthase. We use word synthetase whenever any condensation reaction utilizes ATP. Here ATP is not utilized, so this condensation reaction we can call it as a simply synthase, right? Once citrate is formed, it gets converted to the C seconitate by the dehydration. That means water molecule is getting removed. Now this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme aconitase. So this aconitase, it causes the dehydration of the citrate and gets converted to C seconitate. So here you can see carbon molecule is not getting removed. So C seconitate, it is also a six carbon compound. Once C seconitate is formed, it does not leave this enzyme, rather it is still bound with this enzyme. And again, it will be acted upon by this aconitase enzyme. And in this reaction, one water molecule is being added and it gets converted to isocitrate. So remember, aconitase, it catalyzes conversion of citrate to c seconitate and c seconitate to isocitrate. Isocitrate is also a 6-carbon compound. Now, there is one very important thing about this aconitase and that is at the active site of aconitase, there is one iron sulfur center. This iron sulfur center, it is very, very important for the aconitase to carry out this reaction. Without iron sulfur center at the active site, aconitase enzyme cannot catalyze conversion of citrate to cis aconitate and cis aconitate to isocitrate. But what happens when the body store of iron is decreased? At that time, aconitase enzyme will lose its iron sulfur center. So now, when the body store of iron is low, at that time, our aconitase enzyme will be there, but that will be without its iron sulfur center. So, of course, aconitase enzyme in this form, it will not able to catalyze this reaction of TCA cycle. Now, in such condition, it will create or it will carry out new job, new task. What is this new task? In this form, aconitase without iron sulfur center, it carries out regulation of iron homeostasis. Regulation of iron homeostasis. So, as you can see that aconitase, it is carrying out two jobs. What is its main job? Main job is in the participation of TCA cycle. Whereas as a side hustle or the second job, it is regulating the iron homeostasis, right? In the corporate world, when one employee is doing two jobs, one is its main job, that main nine to five job, 
एंड सेकेंड जॉब मेनली ही और शी कैरीज आउट इन द इवनिंग टाइम और नाइट टाइम विदाउट टेलिंग अबाउट अबाउट दिस जॉब टू इट्स फर्स्ट एम्प्लॉयर सो सच जॉब इन द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ मून लाइट जॉब सो अकॉर्डिंगली एकोनिटेज एंजाइम इट इज ऑल्सो कैरिंग आउट द मून लाइट जॉब वॉट इज द मून लाइट जॉब ओवर इयर regulation of iron homeostasis whereas main job is the participation in the tca cycle right so because of that aconitase is one of the very good example of the moon light enzyme so this thing we have to keep in mind now there are several other enzymes also which can carry out the moon light job but right now in the relation with the tca cycle remember aconitase is a moon light enzyme now once isocitrate is formed this isocitrate is formed it gets oxidized and gets converted to oxalosuccinate so this is the oxidation reaction now in the tca cycle oxidation always occurs by the dehydrogenation right so whenever i say oxidation you have to understand that two hydrogen atoms are getting removed that is a dehydrogenation reaction so for the removal of this hydrogen atoms nad plus will help so nad plus will take away two hydrogen atoms from this isocitrate and this nad plus it gets converted to nadh plus h plus the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is the isocitrate dehydrogenase isocitrate dehydrogenase now once oxalosuccinate is formed it will remain still bound with this isocitrate dehydrogenase it will not leave this enzyme and this enzyme will again act on oxalosuccinate to carry out decarboxylation reaction that means removal of carbon dioxide molecule so this is the decarboxylation reaction and this reaction is also catalyzed by the same enzyme that is isocitrate dehydrogenase but remember when this isocitrate dehydrogenase it carries out this decarboxylation reaction at that time it will require either magnesium or manganese at its active site so this metal ions are uh, are required by this isocitrate dehydrogenase during this decarboxylation reaction but not during this oxidation reaction right the second important thing is that that here carbon dioxide is getting removed and oxalosuccinate it is also a six carbon compound so here this product that is alpha ketoglutarate it will now carry five carbon only why because one carbon is removed in the form of carbon dioxide and the second important thing here oxidation is occurring and decarboxylation is also occurring by the same enzyme that is isocitrate dehydrogenase so this entire this two step reaction we can call it as a oxidative decarboxylation reaction right one thing more about this isocitrate dehydrogenase is that there are two different types of iso enzymes of isocitrate dehydrogenase one iso enzyme it is specific for nad plus and other iso enzyme it is specific for nadp plus here in this diagram i had shown you only one which is specific for nad plus but don't forget instead of nad plus it can be nadp also and here so instead of nadh it will be nadp h plus h plus right this one which is specific for the nad plus it is found only in the mitochondria whereas one which is specific for nadp plus it is found in the mitochondria as well as cytosol right so now see if it is nad plus dependent then it will generate nadh plus h plus so this can go under electron transport chain and can generate atp right what about this nadp h plus h plus whenever nadp h is generated its main purpose is for the reductive anabolic reaction it will be utilized for the reductive anabolic reaction so we have to keep in mind that while converter conversion from isocitrate to oxalosuccinate nadp plus nad plus or nadp plus can be utilized right now once this alpha ketoglutarate is formed which is now of the five carbon compound it undergo further oxidative decarboxylation reaction oxidative decarboxylation reaction and gets converted to succinyl coenzyme a so here also here also oxidation occurs by the dehydrogenation that means removal of the two hydrogen atom so here also the carrier is nad plus this nad plus comes and takes away two hydrogen atoms from this alpha ketoglutarate 
So, it self gets converted to NADH plus H plus. So, this is the oxidation step. It is also undergoing decarboxylation. That means, one carbon dioxide molecule is getting removed. So, as one carbon dioxide molecule is getting removed, this alpha ketoglutarate which is 5 carbon, it will be like this succinyl coenzyme A, it will be of the 4 carbon compound. And here you can see that this COA, this coenzyme A group is being added. So, that is being added by the coenzyme A with its thiol group. So, this is the complete oxidative decarboxylation of the alpha ketoglutarate. This reaction is catalyzed by the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. This is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Now, this complex is very much similar to our pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. If you remember in, in just previous video, we had talked about this PDH complex that is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, there is so much of the structural similarity. This pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, it converts pyruvate to the acetyl coenzyme A, right? And this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, it carries out alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl coenzyme A. See, in case of PDH complex, it was requiring a 5 coenzymes right 5 coenzymes are required for the pdh complex the same 5 coenzymes they are required by this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex can you recall these 5 coenzymes yes we have thymine pyrophosphate then we have lipoamide then fad then coenzyme a and nad so, these 5 coenzymes, they are required by this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex as well as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. These 5 coenzymes, they are repeatedly being asked in various competitive exam exams. So, this becomes very, very important for us. We have to remember this. Now, once this succinyl coenzyme A is formed, it undergoes substrate level phosphorylation and gives rise to succinate. The here, the enzyme is succinate thiokinase succinate thiokinase. This, this reaction is the substrate level phosphorylation. That means ATP is getting converted, sorry, ADP binds with the inorganic phosphate and gets converted to the ATP. As here direct at the level of substrate, this phosphorylation is occurring. That is why we can call it as a substrate level phosphorylation. Right. And meanwhile, this coenzyme A portion is also getting removed. So, there is a removal of this coenzyme A with its thiol group. Now, here also in case of succinate thiokinase, there are two different forms of succinate thiokinase is seen. One which is specific for the ADP and one which is specific for the GDP. Okay. This convert ADP to ATP and this second isoenzyme form, it convert GTP to GTP. Now, one which is specific for this conversion of GDP to JTP, it is found only in very limited tissue. For example, it is found only in the liver and kidney. Whereas, one which is responsible for conversion of ATP to ATP, it is found in all the tissues. All the tissues. So, here we have two possibility, either ADP to ATP conversion or GDP to GTP conversion. Now, why in liver and kidney this specific isoenzyme is present? The reason is that in the liver and kidney when GTP is synthesized, this GTP is useful for the conversion of oxaloacetate to the phosphoenol pyruvate. Now, this conversion of oxo oxaloacetate to phosphoenol pyruvate is one of the very important reaction of the gluconeogenesis. Gluconeo genesis and surprisingly enough liver and kidney these are the two organs where gluconeogenesis occurs right so see in the liver and kidney this specific enzyme which converts gdp to gtp it helps in the gluconeogenesis so we can consider that this step is one of the important regulatory step which links between tca cycle and this gluconeogenesis and in all other tissue there is a ADP to ATP. So, this ATP will be utilized for the energy store of our body. Now, the second aspect about GTP is that this GTP 
can easily get converted to ATP. This GTP loses its phosphate to the ADP and ADP can be converted to ATP. So, this GTP will serve both the purpose to synthesize ATP as well as for this gluconeogenesis. Right. So, in any way ATP can be synthesized by this step. Now, the next reaction that is conversion of the succinate to the fumarate. Now, this is again oxidation reaction. Right. So, here what happens? This oxidation it occurs by the dehydrogenation. Two hydrogen atoms removed from the succinate and gets synthesized to fumarate. But here the hydrogen atom acceptor is the FAD. This FAD takes away two hydrogen atom and form FADH2. Right. And the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is the succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate dehydrogenase enzyme catalyzes the conversion of succinate to the fumarate. Now, this succinate dehydrogenase is nothing but the complex 2, complex 2 of electron transport chain, right. And we know that all the complexes of electron transport chain, they are embedded inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember all the enzymes of TCA cycle, they are lying in the matrix of mitochondria whereas only exception is this succinate dehydrogenase or also called as a complex 2. This is the only enzyme of the TCA cycle which is embedded or which is bound with the inner mitochondrial membrane. The second important aspect about this succinate dehydrogenase is that, that it has 3 iron sulfur center. Remember iron sulfur center it was also present in this aconitase enzyme but here in the aconitase only one iron sulfur center is there whereas in succinate dehydrogenase there are total three iron sulfur center and unlike aconitase this enzyme is not a moonlight enzyme it has only one function that succinate to fumarate and generates FADH2. Now once fumarate is formed it gets hydrated that means water molecules get added and it gets converted to L malate and the enzyme working over here is fumarase. Now, once L malate is formed, it gets converted or regenerates oxaloacetate by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase, malate dehydrogenase. Right. Now, this is also oxidation reaction and here also oxidation occurs by the dehydrogenation and in this case, the hydrogen atom acceptor is the NAD plus and itself takes up a two hydrogen atom and forms NADH plus H plus. So, as you can see, oxaloacetate is being regenerated, right? And it is not getting consumed. So, we are considering oxaloacetate as a main catalyst of this entire TCA cycle. So, now this completes over all the reactions of TCA cycle. So, in this TCA cycle, see what happened? This acetyl coenzyme A, it entered into the reaction and it had given rise to two carbon dioxide molecule, one carbon dioxide over here and second carbon dioxide over here. And along with this oxidation process, it had generated three NADH, one NADH plus molecule over here, second NADH molecule at this step and third NADH molecule at this step. Along with this three NADH, it is also generating one FADH2 molecule at this place and there is also one substrate level phosphorylation. So, one ATP is being generated at this place. So, in very simplified manner, if I want to represent this TCA cycle, I can say that, sorry, that acetyl coenzyme A, it undergoes complete oxidation by the TCA cycle and it gives rise to two carbon dioxide molecule and it's this coenzyme A part is getting released, right? And during this complete oxidation, three important things are occurring. What is that? One substrate level phosphorylation is there. So, ADP plus PI, it is getting converted to one ATP. Three molecules of NAD plus are getting reduced to three NADH plus H plus molecule and one FAD molecule is getting reduced to FADH2 molecule. So, this is the simplest version of this TCA cycle. 
Now, if we talk, uh, talk about how much energy is released or energetics of TCA cycle, see, this is the one ATP, net one ATP is generated for each molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. This three NADH molecule, each NADH molecule passes through the electron transport chain and can generate 2.5 ATPs, right? And this is occurring three times. So, 3 into 2.5 ATP, that makes total 7.5 ATPs. And one FADH2 molecule, when it passes through the electron transport chain, it can give rise to 1.5 ATP. So, 1 ATP plus 7.5 ATP plus 1.5 ATP, that makes total 10 ATPs. So, for each TCA cycle or for each complete oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A, we can get total 10 ATPs. Now, in this TCA cycle, there are certain important inhibitors also. Let us talk about these inhibitors. So, aconitase, this enzyme, it can be non-competitively inhibited by the fluoroacetate. Fluoroacetate. This compound is found in many pesticides or it may be generated in our body by the metabolism of some fluoride containing anti-cancer treatment. It can give rise to fluoroacetate which can inhibit this aconitase enzyme. Second example is this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Just like PDH complex, this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, it can also inhibited by the arsenite. Arsenite inhibits alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. And this succinate dehydrogenase, it can be inhibited by the melonate. But remember, melonate inhibition of the succinate dehydrogenase, it is a competitive inhibition because melonate is the structure, structural analog of the succinate. Whereas, arsenite inhibiting alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex and fluoroacetate inhibiting aconitase, both are the non-competitive inhibition. This inhibitor and their enzyme pairs, they are the important question in the various competitive exams. So, this thing along with their enzyme, we have to remember. We have to also remember their mechanism that this is non-competitive inhibition. This is also non-competitive inhibition, whereas this is competitive inhibition. One more important thing about the TCA cycle is use of role of various vitamin. See, in the TCA cycle, in the TCA cycle, there is an important role of the thiamine, that is vitamin B1, important role of riboflavin, that is vitamin B2, and important role of niacin, which is vitamin B3. One more vitamin, that is pantothenic acid, pantothenic acid, okay. See, thiamine vitamin, its active form is thiamine pyrophosphate. Riboflavin, its coenzyme form is flavin adenine dinucleotide. Niacin, its active form, of, the form is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, both are positively charged. And pantothenic acid, its active form is coenzyme A. So, this thiamine pyrophosphate, FAD, NAD and coenzyme A, all these are important in alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. All these four vitamins are required. Now, riboflavin, in addition to this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, it is also useful at the final oxidation pathway that is from, sorry, from succinate to this fumarate. This succinate dehydrogenase, it requires FAD. So, this riboflavin, it is utilized in the succinate dehydrogenase catalyzed reaction. Remember, this succinate dehydrogenase, it is nothing but the complex 2 of the electron transport chain. This NAD plus, in addition to this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, it is also utilized at two more places. One at this isocytate dehydrogenase and other one is in this final step that is melate dehydrogenase, right? So, let us write that down. So, we have isocytate dehydrogenase and melate dehydrogenase. Right. What about this pantothenic acid? In addition to alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, you can see this coenzyme A, it is required over here in this step that is catalyzed by the citrate synthase and at this step, right, coenzyme A in the succinyl coa. 
So, this pentathonic acid, it is important in addition to alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex at the acetyl coenzyme A and succinyl coenzyme A. So, these are the various vitamins which are required for the TCA cycle. So, that completes our discussion about the tricarboxylic acid cycle. In the next video, I will discuss about regulation of the TCA cycle. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.